in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed it's a privilege and we thank you. Lord, we pray that the fruits will abide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, can you help me with this fan, please? Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for the privilege. We are to start a series tonight, um, but I may suspend it for next week it's supposed to be a very powerful series i know how prepared we have been but the lord just put something in my heart um in fact i was about to send some materials for printing that i'll be using tonight um and the lord just put something very important in my heart that i think would be a preamble to this series and i trust that god will bless us in the name of jesus amen and amen Second Timothy chapter 3. Pick up your Bibles and let's look at the Word of God. I love the Word of God because it is the only instrument that can help me understand the ways of God. The Bible is a very interesting book. Unlike novels or many other books that have been written by religious founders and people who have documented their convictions, the Bible is able to convey to any man the realities of the Spirit, the very mind of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's good to see everyone. I'll read just two verses then we'll teach verse 16 second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 if you're there say amen all scripture is given by inspiration of god this is Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. It was at a time when he was admonishing him. Theologically speaking, Timothy was a very young man. And he happened to be the bishop. It was a name for an overseer. He had responsibility of building and maturing the saints that were committed unto him. And so once and again, Paul would write to him on different aspects of um, leadership church administration and so on and so forth and this was one of those uh, times so he was writing to him and he told him something he said all scripture is given by inspiration of god then the bible says and is profitable everyone says scripture is profitable please say it again scripture is profitable anything the Bible tells you is profitable. I think you should pay attention to. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are many things in our lives we consider to be profitable. And so we spend time, we spend resources. Um, for instance, being gainfully employed is profitable. So we rejoice whenever we find out that someone is gainfully employed. We are happy. Right? We consider marriage to be profitable. Having children is profitable. So when a woman um, gets pregnant or delivers a child, we all celebrate. There are things in our lives that are profitable. And here Paul is telling his son in the gospel, he's saying, look, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. He said, and it's profitable. 
Number one, for doctrine. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. To the end that whoever commits himself to them, he says that the man of God may be what? The word perfect, there's the word mature. That the man of God may be mature. Thoroughly furnished. I like that. Not just furnished. He said thoroughly furnished unto how many? All good works. Please listen to me. We all want to see results in our lives. We all want to be mightily used by God in different areas. It's been the cry of people. That's why many of us are gathered here, trusting that we'll learn of the ways of God. And here the apostle is saying that scripture is able to make a man of God mature. Then it's able to make him thoroughly furnished. He uses a language that is used in, in, in furniture work. When you know how furniture is, the finishing you put on it, you, you file it, you polish it. And it looks beautiful. It says thoroughly furnished. So you come to a point where the degree of inaccuracy in your life is minimal. So minimal. Anyone can trust you. Your voice can be taken as the voice of God. That's what it means to be thoroughly furnished. Such that when you communicate truths to people. They don't have to be under pressure to run around trying to verify because they have been able to gain confidence in your furnishing. They have come to a point where they understand that anything that leaves your mouth has been thoroughly edited. Your alignment to the spirit is so strong that your communications will have minimal correction. And so their hearts are open to receive. Then he says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto the healing ministry. Unto delivering people. Unto saving people. Right? Acts 10, 38 says how um, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And with power. The Bible says he went about doing what? Good. See that? So when the Bible talks of good works, anything that is able to reproduce the victory, the life, the power, the love, the might of God is considered to be good works. Good works are not ambitions. When the Bible talks about good works, it's not talking about your ambition. Everything that you commit yourself to under Christ that is capable of revealing the multifaceted dimensions of God is called good works. So if on the strength of my staying with the word of God, I access the mysteries that can ease men of pain and bring the healing power of Jesus unto them, that is able to furnish me unto that good work. Right? It is very, very important. Please listen to me. God has been giving me some profound revelations. It's as though I've never read the Bible all my life. Sometimes I just open the Bible and I just lie down and I don't even know what because it looks like every verse I could dwell there forever. There's something about illumination. I want to teach you something very profound tonight that will really bless you. Illumination um, is, is, is similar to the word enlightenment. Whenever we talk about illumination, access to light, access to knowledge, access to information, we have in our society those we call the elite or those who have illumination. We mean that they have been able to educate their minds. They have been able to train and program their minds to think and function in a particular dimension. And they have to an extent been able to drive ignorance. Are we together now? And so we call them the enlightened ones. Even in the world, they have groups and cults that they call Illuminati. And, and those people... Pastor, is that you? God bless you. I'd like us to bless him. Great man of God, all the way from Kaduna. Thank you. Please, can you stand up? Let's honor you. 
Thank you so much. I'm happy to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're to have a great meeting in his church and um, we couldn't make it, but um, we're coming. We're coming loaded and we'll bless the whole church. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is destructive. The strength of darkness is ignorance. The strength of darkness in the life of a man, in the life of a pastor, in the life of a leader is ignorance. What is ignorance? Absence of light. Absence of strategy. Absence of illumination. Absence of understanding. Say amen. There is so much ignorance in the body. We have to contend with God's light. To drive away this darkness. Otherwise the days that are coming will, um, will embarrass us very seriously. The days that are coming now are separating the church into very two clear lines. It's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. The disciples kept walking with Jesus. They thought they were understanding what he was teaching. And one time he went up to the Mount of Transfiguration. And they were happy to shine. And they brought somebody who had an epileptic uh, condition. Have you read that in scripture? And they were so... Listen, let me tell you something. That you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened. I'm going to tell you what illumination is. Those guys had been with Jesus. They heard him every time. And now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves, trying everything they knew to do. And here comes Jesus from the mountain. And then they brought the man. They said, your disciples could not heal him. And, and they just stood dumbfounded, hoping Jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special. And Jesus proved them wrong. Isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special? It's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area. It cancels out every excuse you would have given. Hallelujah. That's why they hated Jesus. They hated Jesus because every time he showed up, his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people. Jesus ministers to this person and at once he is healed. He comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound. Have you read that scripture? I'm sure the people had been giving all kinds of excuses. Madam, Look, this and that and that, and she believed it. But here comes Jesus. And then he lays hands on her and even tells her, Madam, I'm surprised you are sick. Didn't they teach you, all the people who have been teaching every time, didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of Abraham? Did they not tell you the covenant that God had with him? Ah, the woman said, I, I, nobody told me. And the, the scribes were standing there, hoping Jesus would fail. And to their shame, he laid his hands and the woman stood up straight. And they started finding excuses. Look at the excuses they brought. Don't heal people on Sunday. Don't give them food. There's all kinds of flimsy excuses. I pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. We never know how cheap Satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination. Hallelujah. Illumination is a very interesting word. Isaiah chapter 60, please. It's a scripture I've been meditating upon, not just because the Lord gave it to us as a prophetic word. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Please hear me. And take what I'm saying seriously. Your breakthrough in life is at the mercy 
of light, your illumination, your depth of spiritual enlightenment, the quality of your ministry, the quality of your life. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. He says, incline them to your ears. Do not let them depart from you. He said, they are life to those who find them. Not those who hear about it. They are life to those who found them. And health to their flesh. He says in Isaiah 60 verse 1. What's the first word? Arise. Arise. Can we get amplified? Is it possible? I like the way Ad, Ad, Amplified puts it. Very, very interesting. I came with a very strong burden tonight. Verse 1, Amplified. I like us to read it. One, to read. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, to read. Listen, this is, this is the prophet speaking. He says that circumstances have kept you at a level. Have kept your family at a level. Nobody crosses a particular line. Nobody crosses a particular dimension. A line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line. And now he says, arise. It's a prophetic call. Break standards. Do something that has not been done before. And then he says, shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light is come. You've heard me say it again. Not for your light is available. It has always been available. But until it comes to you. Are we together now? That's why two people, brothers and sisters, walk this earth and their, their, their testimonies are different. Like Goshen and Egypt. Others were dying in Egypt, whereas there was absolute tranquility in Goshen. Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough, even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see, the trouble with the church is we... we uh, of course, that's, that's not applicable here, but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination, but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me, there's a cause, there's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost. That only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside. And I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around. Victims of what they don't know. 
you can see a woman sit down and and please don't feel bad i, I mean see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have they never can know that life can be better you see a lot of pastors well-meaning and sincere people but victims of darkness victims of ignorance and i made up my mind that in my life i will be a bank of illumination it's an assignment it's a project i gave myself that i will surround myself with mysteries like chariots that on the strength of those mysteries you will dominate I've been meditating on this scripture it says arise brothers and sisters when the bible tells you to arise it means access has been given to that light arise arise shine for your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 we're headed for verse 3 but let's just look at verse 2 media help us verse 2 it says for behold see Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Now this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. Ah, Kabbalah. Da, da. I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. Hmm. It says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. It's a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have light too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable, but they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry, but it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, forget the fact that we insult you. We know, we know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. 
any dimension, listen to me very importantly, any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again, it didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness it have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them. You don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But he's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible where it was written by his stripes, I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says, Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it, and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you.
Alleluia. Gentiles will come to your light. Your assignment is not to run around chasing people, looking for favor. No. The reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. If you want to come out of the situations that surround your life, the first key is light. The first key is illumination. There is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life. Are we, are we together? Please listen. Are we together? There is something you don't know right now. There is something you can know that will change your life forever. I sit down and I look at what the Lord has shown me now. And I look at what I used to know four, five, six years years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination i would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things i didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do I have light or do I just have the letter do I have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries. They have come to understand and apply write those two words understanding and application these are the two things that make the word of god profit you understanding and application in all you're getting it says get understanding wisdom tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it wisdom tells you it is good to tithe understanding tells you how to tithe that you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe the bible says honor the lord not give to the lord when it comes to tithing your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding are we together now so the bible teaches us that it has been given unto us say it has been given to me Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me. Anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped. I run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word. They are dangerous. I rather stay with I rather stay with a herbalist. A herbalist is more friendly, at least he's passionate about something, than than a careless person who has no passion. His ignorance will affect you. Don't forget, people have atmospheres. 
right the same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease what do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you what do you know what is your guarantee for a blessed life i think i'm fine you are joking you are really joking i went to school you are joking two times I'm very serious. I mean, jokes apart, I'm really serious this night. What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing, I'm showing you all the areas when I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge you see another mistake is many believers go for knowledge but our knowledge is not strategic it's not applicable it's like a student who maybe got medicine and he can sit down and say i think i want to attend a, an architecture lecture and he goes there and then next tomorrow he's in theater art he's taking lectures but it's not strategic it's not constructive at the end he will never become a doctor so many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to. You gather up the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth, you have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life. And the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorance they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads Hallelujah. There is something Bishop Oyedeko knows that we do not know. There is something he has handled that is producing the results. Are we together? Oh, he's just lucky. He had an 18-hour vision. Wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing. That encounter. I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? He said, not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light. Or just shadows of realities. 
what gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job did you know that two for instance out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation there are many first class students two one students two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting joining the queue even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So, by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, it's not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Oh, I shouldn't touch here. All right. Can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think it's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 
I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I'm tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible, this one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalah Tayada keys that open doors these are ancient keys brothers and sisters those see there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before the bible lists them in hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we're guessing over our finances. We're guessing over ministry. We're guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you're anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody said there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody said there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given to, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. What keeps you in divine health? Look at sicknesses flying all around. You enter a restaurant, you don't even know where they got the water from. And you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, his, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. Sister, do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you? Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. 
Uh, stand up, Pastor Femi. Stand up, promise. Watch these guys. Please sit down. Sit down. Were you afraid of sitting? Did you turn back to even check? You know why? Because they are sitting based on an enlightenment. They know what this chair can do. Are we together now? They know that this chair can take their weight. They are not thinking about it. I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this, trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say sit down, look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Uh, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time, come. All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these kids not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. All right? Okay, thank you, thank you. Go and do your job. All right, so Mike, play. Please play something. Same keyboard, same church same ministry same business same academics same nigeria play go ahead anything same keyboard that guy said his government that guy said is 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 nigeria that is not giving job that guy says machines that cause cancer i mean look at this listen the bible now watch this when everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time. Are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you for what you carry? Is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you? They started it quietly, but now they are open about it. Everybody is telling you, you are really a nuisance to me. Pastors, who is seeking you? Who calls your phone 
and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick his problem dies who is willing to pick your call that even if you say i don't have credit say no problem me i have money it's, it's, I, I need light they sought for jesus to a point that people tore zinc they knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on who has been that desperate about your grace who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Hi. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture and build yourself out of this wicked world. Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually every man of god believes him too he's a captain of his own even if there's no result and everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say this. i don't say it in a cynical way i know the things that are not in my life and i'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger and even if it is one of our little ones here that have it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say show me the way this is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, Pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility, this man has pursued me like, like, I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said it again. The day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking, I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if, you will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed. Although you are in a place of tremendous change. Pride. Familiarity. You do not discern. You do not discern. Please listen to me. The Bible says you don't discern the Lord's body. And for that reason many are weak. Many are sick. Oh I've had koinonia message activating breakthrough destiny I've had it I was even there they used me as an example and you think that letter is illumination and somebody somewhere in one one room made with mud will download it and say Lord I have found it I found the key so destiny help us and be praying it and the Holy Ghost will say this is it a woman came from Benway State I think I, I can't remember last year or so this woman came with her husband they were pastors for many years they had struggled it's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper you pay for everything by yourself <laughs> when when the woman listen when the woman i don't know how i think one somebody here in, in koinonia went there and gave her just that message activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny helpers she received that message digested the message she said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times there are messages in my life i've listened to up to 1000 times one message god is my witness one message i'm a product of many anointings what are you a product of your world your rema your deception you keep moving around in confusion with no result stirring up expectations in people oh i've come for this meeting you will see what god will do they say we are watching at the end of you say it's just that there's no time otherwise you would have seen what god will do it's a lie there is time there is time nothing will ever cover for lack of light not suit not good dressing not english not even rema it says you if you are not rising your light has not come 
it was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. It's in your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing. my life I listen to at least one koinonia message I know there are uncommon mysteries forget that it came through me I have learned many things from my messages than many messages I listen to it and I'm praying and when is the time when apostle is prophesying I kneel down and I lift my hands as he's speaking see listen you have to learn what I'm telling you because this year make up your mind not to cheat yourself See, arrogance with no result is not leading. It's, it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there. He say it's just that I kept the money. So no, 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 no. I'm tired of lack of results. There is a higher standard God is gauging me with. God will not gauge me with the same standard He's gauging many of us because to whom much is given, much is expected. Are we together now? Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations during my retreat for this year. I said, any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this, no matter how you deceive me. I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God walking in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? God asked me to pause with the series we will start. Because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man 
a man must appear for that door to open so my prayer is very strategic and intentional i don't pray stupid prayers i pray with intelligence lord where are the helpers i call them because i know if a helper does not appear that door will not open and here comes the helper because i know how to call them they never come on their own they are always called you have been waiting for them you will wait forever there is a mystery that calls helpers are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming. So there are so many things sucking out of me. Time is so limited for me. But many of us have everything. All the messages are there with the testimonies. Do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say, activate us. What is all this? What do you need to learn again? And you call your uncle. He says, I won't pick. And you are there helpless. And the angels are saying, what is uncle? We are here. What is uncle? Have you not read in the Bible that strangers shall feed your flock? Which one is uncle again? But in your mind, according to what you know, if your uncle does not pick your call after two days, you are dead. Who told you? Aya. Have you not had the ravens brought bread for Elijah? Where did the ravens come from? Lack of light has limited us. Please hear what I'm saying. God can raise helpers for you. You have tied God. How many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people, it's because we have not put balloon around the church. That's why people are not coming. No. And we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and, and, and we have protocol and PA, no power, no grace, no understanding, no results. The trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused. Lean and hungry. Say, I'm tired of guessing. Say it again. I don't know how to beg you and make you believe what I'm saying. I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility. Never make a mistake to think it is guess. It can be reproduced anywhere. The same result. It was founded upon mysteries, not luck. Are we together? Yeah. Jesus went to the desert. The same crowds came. He went to the mountain. He went by the... The people, men and women, climbed the mountain, stayed there three days. He had to now say, let's feed them. Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me. I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next when 14. Next week Friday. Next week, Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, 
I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly. Can you say it? Me, I can say it, oh, my goodness. I wave poverty by, it waved me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see, there is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it. And his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school? You are saying jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way to paradise. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth. Teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you. With that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? No, oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part away. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, ba, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university. There are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life. He studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools. He studies your ignorance. He can create illusions out of your ignorance. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't just run and come into your life. He takes a track record. He looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of God. And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance and you find out that in that one mistake your ministry has been implicated in that one mistake your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father 
God is telling you this way. The authority over your life is saying this way. And people say submit. What have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life? I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do for I need you more and more I'm so aware of my ignorance so I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do Lord I need you more and I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has God said do I understand what is don't think what you think God said you see that you can assume it's like exams every student sits down they say start and everybody's writing and when you come out the person will say what was your answer this person say five my say my own was three and two of them believe they are right it's left for the lecturer by the time you see zero what does that mean it means you were wrong say ah but the man didn't mark my script well you still got zero everybody who scored five got it for you did your calculation and arrived at three meaning you failed you didn't get it well it's up to you to adjust and say no 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 i think i missed something or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man many of us never will admit that we are ignorant it doesn't cost me anything you you don't know how i whenever god tells me son i think you need to know more there is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it i jump at it i almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change when you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life you see what is happening you just sit down you see you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it if i am not getting results in my life right now and pastor femi is getting results and i try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious i'm only joking because the truth is you have problems and do you know members know where to get answers oh yes they know where to get answers i told you was it last week or week before last that if i am an unbeliever when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I won't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I will wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I will bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. Are we together? I foresee that a time will come. That thing will happen in church members will hold charm and come for service with it the moment they are talking before altar call somebody will stand up and say sir this guy bought for you this is the charm that brought it and i can throw it if you can prove it otherwise that's what happened between moses and pharaoh he had to take the rod and pharaoh said get out of this place you grew up you ate the food that this god ra brought now you are coming to destroy it and moses said i found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen moses said as at that time i thought ra was the highest of the gods and so my allegiance but i found i found somebody in the wilderness and he called himself i am 
and he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty and when he swallowed up this and after nine ten plagues pharaoh had to give up pastors let's stop deceiving people we know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth we know where we have results and where we don't have results let's admit it and not explain creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god it's waiting for the manifestation there are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now some of them have come desperate to receive something imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go shake it and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done. The earlier you admit it, the faster and the better for you. Oh, there's one guy that says I should just hold on. When a job, when there's job interview, 
you will give me. That's too costly. You are living your life at the mercy of somebody. If it now doesn't work, you will hate the person. Why don't you live? Forget about all these things and wait upon God. Are we together now? Oh, a lecturer promised me that this time around I will get A in my project. What if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense? Then you fail. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Oh, God said I'm going to enter the house. How do you think you are going to enter the house? Just because you think you are earning 50,000. Can 50,000 give you a house? You too ask yourself. Look at, see, this is how foolish, I'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are. They, 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 whenever they are, they are looking at their salary, oh, 50,000, so let's calculate. It will never work that way. The devil will use it to destroy you. One sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us. You've raised 500,000. One sickness will wipe it away. But you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night. And get up in the morning and say, sorry, I don't know who this person is, but the Lord has called me and said, Pastor Alpha, God has said I should change your story. And you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and God will say, you ask for it. I said, ask and you shall receive. But the Bible says that we not pray amiss. Mothers, fathers, everybody, please hear me. There is a way out of everything, I believe. There is a way out of everything. Sister, that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation. Just one more thing I'll add to us and we'll pray. One of the mysteries that I have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of Christ. I know there are many mysteries. I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change. All men are not equal. Criticize me, but just listen. All men are not equal. If you take that mindset, this is not supposed to be a bad statement. Please don't misunderstand me. I wish it were a lie, but it's the truth. All men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth he said because you cannot discern the Lord's body the organogram of and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning I'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what God has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table, is it not what you know that you will eat? You see something looking yellow, you are not sure and you leave it there. And later you find out that that thing is good for your health. That's how we are. Listen. I'm talking about light and illumination. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in us in all richness. Colossians 3, 16. But you see, one of the greatest blessings of God to the church outside the Holy Spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me i've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the bible says the church was built with a very definite system it says christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations, the apostles and the prophets. Now, that's not to say other um, members of the body. It's the same thing. You don't give your life to the Holy Spirit. You don't come and say, Holy Spirit, you died for me. He didn't die for you. Although they are equal with God. But salvation has been put in no other name. There is an office that ministers salvation. Are we together? That's how it is. You have passed. Listen. There are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself. You hear me say this thing all the time. There, no matter how arrogant you are, no man can bless himself. There are certain dimensions that it will take 
a representative of these ministries it's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ. Serve God with truth and dignity. There are many of our parents that are grounded. God will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say, this young guy. Or God will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak English very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching. He may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies. Are we together now? He may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually. Say, I thought I, I need somebody with Rema. Tell me Greek and Hebrew words. Whereas the person sent, he came out dressed like John, like, like, like a prophet. Even Jesus could not ignore the ministry of John and excel. Because when he came, he looked for the one who that mantle was upon, that foundational mantle. John said, ah, I've seen you. Say, no, suffer it to be so. I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. When it was time, the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils, separate me Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them. There was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas. Did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets, but they never excelled in ministry? Look at that. They died with their prophetic grace because although they were prophets, they ignored the structure of the body. Listen, there are many people the Bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again. That's why some of us are where we are. Gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around. There was a pastor friend, I used to watch him. Um, the guy loves me so much, he admires me, but... I think for a very long time I used to see him. He just comes around, laughs around. When they are prophesying or speaking, he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand. He just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving. And I knew that this guy would never receive anything. In his mind, he thinks he will receive. Let me tell you something. There are requirements from receiving from these gifts. One of the requirements is honor. 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 You must honor both the person and the office. He says, he, please, this is not human worship. I don't want to, I have no business. I wish I were not the one preaching this. I wish you were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true. I have seen, listen, I have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families. And I have been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as I watched these families go down in penury. Because honor is the key that releases the anointing. Jesus entered certain cities and passed like this. A woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him. What have you ignored that has refused your door from opening? Please hear what I'm saying, Koinonia. Don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say, let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time when sickness when the serpents were destroying the people nothing happened to moses question what did the snake see that made them not to bite moses it's in your bible right that he told him lift up a serpent is it not true look at how people were immune in the bible things were happening to others elijah there was famine he never was even concerned about the famine because he knew that nothing would happen to him there was famine in samaria elisha came he was not saying hey i'm dying give me food he came and saw women eating their children and said what happened there was another mystery that gave him supply. Brothers and sisters, there is a way out of every situation in your life. You can come to a man of God to pray for you, but you can just come 
as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who will encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way I have ministered to people and their lives have changed. A, a woman gave a testimony and this is true. This is, I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry. The woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message. And she said she always used to ignore it because, you know, she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that. You, you know what I'm saying? And one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then God was, you know, using my voice to just challenge her and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says oh well she says well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish she there is a way you can honor a man of God and put pressure on his office. Not anointing his office. It will force him to release something into your life. When I say honor, I don't mean money. A deep, a deep seated. There are few men of God I've met in my life. And the way I honored them when they were speaking and blessing me, I knew it came from their spirit. I'll find somewhere to stop because I want us to pray. Brothers and sisters, results are possible in the spirit. It's not a matter of luck. It's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing. The mystery of the communion. Many of us take communion just as something they do in church. Get me wafers. Get me zobo. Okay, there's five alive. Bring it. And you're like, oh God, thank you. And you just threw it. You just took breakfast. Whereas it has delivered a lot of people. Tithing. You do it, but not with understanding. So the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody, you, just, you are just waiting. Those who are tight as you come and stand. And although you are supposed, you are doing something spiritual, it's not working. Because it's not done. The Bible says, honor the Lord. It didn't say bribe him. You squeeze your envelope, you just come and stand and say, oh yeah, God, take. No. When Abraham met Melchizedek, the king of Salem, that ancient city, 
listen do you know it was after he gave the tithe immediately god spoke to him and said fear not he was teaching him a mystery he said i'm about to bless you it takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial so fear not there is something i'm about to open in your life that will make people say well, when did it happen he said don't be afraid i know i'm about to bless you but my first instruction is fear not you have done something that is about to bring prosperity people will not understand the mystery so be courageous to take the criticisms because i'm about to change your life he said i am your exceeding great reward abraham is so intelligent the moment god said i am your exceeding great reward he, the Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him. You see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding. Understanding. It was an impartation. Just one mystery I've shared with you. Do you know if you hold on to this mystery, this law of honor, this year alone, you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime. I promise you. Just this law. Just this law. Just this law. Something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life. Something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach god with a stubborn heart you approach god with a childlike heart please please koinonia hear me i'm about to pray for you for heaven's sake believe the things you hear me say i love you too much to mislead you gentiles please give us isaiah 60 again verse 3 this is the year that gentiles should come to your light this is the year it should happen that you see somebody get up and come and meet you i mean gentiles coming to your light they come with their blessings when jesus was born the wise men saw his star they started looking for it with gold frankincense when they looked at jesus they looked at a baby but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby they started bowing down they didn't wait until he became an adult they didn't say let's see let's watch if he becomes a serious man they knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean a, an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah saul kai oh my goodness saul's donkey was missing his father kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey i hope you know naturally speaking three days they could not find the donkey 
and they say you know what let's not waste our time there is a man there is a man this man there is a prophet there is a man of god and they said ah, there's nothing to take to him they were smart enough and the moment they went to the gate at the gates they saw him and he looked at them do you know what he told them he said go and wait for me and i will tell you everything in your heart do you know what is a mountain to you is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you what looks like a mountain you are there complaining about house rent and god is saying no 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 everybody is growing but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see look at at once they met samuel samuel said i will tell you every he didn't say i will sit down for counseling he said just go up there wait for me i will tell you what is in your heart and when he went there their biggest problem became the smallest he said i know you came for restoration forget about that that's not the issue the donkey has been found is that a human being you think that's a human being talking no that's a system it's not a man it's a system in a human body the same thing with melchizedek you think melchizedek was just a man just a man older than abraham how can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth can a man bless another man like that a man that even christ associated himself with the bible says his priesthood is after the order of melchizedek read your bible and see all these strange men elijah noah i've taught you do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums three stadiums story building three stadiums alone in hundred years he built it is that a normal human being made of gopher wood so you know why he cursed his son i've told you he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness there was something the son saw is a mystery are we together now when jezebel was rising to judge people elijah shows up the tishbite the bible calls him you think that's a normal human being he appears again and he appears again in revelation what of enoch the seventh man from creation he used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him just imagine one day we don't find aaron no grave no nothing it's after he leaves we may say ah so this guy we have been calling Aaron that's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected people looked at him and said my goodness so it is true see when we get to heaven one of the shock for people is when God shows the the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth some of us will put our hands on our head and say I lived with this guy forever I, he was my roommate yet I didn't have the eyes to see I was in his church I was even an usher there was capacity like this to help me look at Gehazi foolish man if you wanted money if if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money is it not to kneel down and beg rather than going to lie you see why he's foolish very stupid man that's why he didn't receive any man too a man who can wipe a rich man's story wouldn't you just kneel down and say my father change my story And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, as you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a bear, a sheep bear. It came out, ate the children and disappeared. What can, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, it said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people. You see them walk. The earth is not worthy. Oh no. Something you are ignoring is destroying your life. We are going to pray. The purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery. Is a mystery away. It can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it. I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. 
what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition Please rise up on your feet. This prayer session we're entering, I want you to pray with all your heart. Lift up your hands and thank the Lord for this word tonight. Illumination. The grace that comes, hear me, when men have an understanding the grace that comes when people can honor. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I'd like you to lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, I know that the mountain before me can live. I just don't know how to let it go, but I want it to go in this year. Lift your voice and pray. This mountain standing before me, there is a way out. Pray, lift your ministry, lift your academics, lift your job, lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying, I've done all I know to do. But tonight I admit, I admit, I, just show me, oh God, show me what I need to do. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sika barato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata se tele pratika te koshoto prada na bala na bala na bala. Alleluia. Alleluia. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results be very sincere with god and say lord there has to be a way out of this lift your voice and pray please take it serious koinonia lord i've not seen the anointing in my life pray lord i'm tired of struggling i lay hands on the sick and nothing happens i've prayed and fasted nothing is happening Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me. Everybody runs away from me. Even those who want to help me change their minds. Something must be wrong somewhere. I admit tonight that I need help. Lord, I pray for my academic. It's been from one tragedy to another. There, there's got to be a way out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances 
and resolve it once and for all i will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around Aparato soto prende que de balada bosh. Rakata parada bosh. Come on, be angry with the challenges in your life and pray. Pray, pray. I was studying. I wanted to find out the secret of church growth. I've heard people say it. I've listened to them. I couldn't quite get the light they got and one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to mark one two three and it was like an anointing that came I knew I had gotten it I knew I had gotten it when people talk about prosperity most of the scriptures in Deuteronomy 8 18 I've not gotten light from that scripture God and God will take you through that word to somewhere else that becomes your access point out Are we together? Two more prayer points. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now, I receive grace to make amendments. Go ahead and pray. Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight every principle that should have opened a door for me i ignored it out of pride i ignored it out of ignorance i i ignored it out of complacency and laziness tonight oh god i cry tonight oh god i cry pray pray Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of his grace. He said, He's able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have ignored the word and you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give or you have been in close touch with the word but just growing in knowledge without revelation revelation is not knowing what scripture has said revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life that's revelation god said it's not revelation it's prophecy it takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said is prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation. There is a there is an alignment. There is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer? Are we together? This is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer. There is a direct relationship between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers. 
a man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough just like that the bible says in daniel chapter 12 right when you read from verse 3 there about it says they that be wise will shine like the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore that's a mystery that any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars he said he that winneth souls is wise and solomon speaking of wisdom said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice just for winning souls you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom and many of us want to be wise we want to do all of that and you watch sinners go to hell you are coming for meeting and you watch people around you are not passionate you are embarrassed the bible says he that is ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of him before my father not on the last day he is before the father making advocacy for you he says i will be ashamed of him before my father are we together now say lord i receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is many of us don't know that the key to get god's heart is be involved where his heart is god is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness you can't stand in your camp alone and say god come and give me tea come and give me bread and god is saying the time is running out there are people going to hell this is the direction i'm facing if you want me to see you turn around and come here don't just stand behind there lift your voice and pray and say lord let let me run at your heartbeat let me run at your heartbeat let me be involved in what you are involved in not just my own agenda let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls, souls transform. Souls genuinely saved. Souls established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning not just preaching to people be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you believe me when I tell you this believe me look at churches that don't win souls they never grow they never grow there's no reason to grow see if you say you are growing spiritually ask yourself what parameter am i using to measure my growth if you think you are growing spiritually just because of complicated bombardment of rema you are fooling yourself at the end of it you will cry a small child who may not know much but do much with what he or she knows will be standing and excelling just like you see certain people doing tutorials and talking and speaking english and they will write exam and get 40 and one obedient student he follows the examples as taught everything he may not be so smart but he's just too obedient to be average the ways of the kingdom have been simplified follow it with total obedience and conviction and walk your way to a life of wonder do you know especially for pastors many pastors are stubborn i tell you they never listen they never walk this part of this humility the precepts of god they want to define their own laws of success until after 10 or 20 years so they find out they are preaching more they are fasting more there's no result whereas a simple childlike obedience will take them out you see another man of god just come up with a heart panting after god and you you will look around this life and say where is the results there are spiritual laws you don't guess them they are there you follow them or you keep rumbling up and down
Look your challenges to the face and say, God is good. Say, my God is good. Yes, my God is good. My God is good. I don't know about yours, but my God is a good God. My God is a good God. I'll never forget one time when a car hit me many years ago. I ran to go and buy, was it Gary or Chinchin or something? And 10 naira was about to take my life. I think it was Gary or something. I wanted to hurriedly soak it and help myself in a bit to cross back. The devil just orchestrated it because he knew that there are millions of lives that must be changed and blessed. And he just came and the car, it was, I was, I was in the middle of the road. I didn't know what to do. All I had was there was sound of a break and there was, it was as if I was dreaming. I just saw myself at the other side of the car and I had people shouting, hold him, hold him. They said, if they don't hold me, I'll stand up and I'll be mad. I just looked at them. I looked at my guy there. I picked it. I told them, I said, give me, yes. I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. That night, my leg, there was, it, it swelled up for days. There was intense pain, but God is my witness. I said, I have met death and I overcame. That's why I don't fear death. I've gone through too many things in my life. I've slept on speaker. I've slept on amplifier. I've, I've come on now. Muimaka Sujada Muimaka 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 Sujada Muimaka Muimaka Ninaimaka Sujada Lord I give you I give you I give you the highest praise I give you I give you I give you the highest praise I give you I give you I give you the highest praise Very soon I'm going to give us room about 10 minutes and it's going to be exclusive expressions of gratitude it's going to be you alone i know you came for a miracle service but father mother brother sister you're going to forget about whoever you came with i don't know how you are going to express it but i'll give us room shortly you are going to begin to count your blessings and say my god was it not just last month i had an accident i never gave you thanks for it lord i'm i'm grateful i started small but see what you have made out of my life lord we started from two members and now we are 35 i thank you i thank you when a situation overwhelmed me i did not know that morning will come yet you have kept me that it has become 20 years i remember when they said i had a heart disease for instance oh lord see what you have done in my life they said people die in our village they don't get to 20 now i am 60 years i give you thanks expressions of gratitude we forget many times we forget we are asking god for more lord do more for me but you are alive but you are healthy you go to the hospital and see people hanging their legs hanging their legs for six months and you hear them singing praises day and night with their legs hanging if you can be grateful not just tonight if you make it a lifestyle i guarantee you there is no arsenal of hell against you that will prosper you will you will you will thank your way to the throne you will march through your challenges through thanksgiving until you get to the throne it's an unbeatable secret of greatness i thank god all the time i thank people all the time gratitude a simple but powerful secret that opens the heavens for a man hallelujah every everywhere that i go everything that i do 
I'll hear it sound Yeah, yeah, yeah That's my testimony I'll hear it sound I'll hear it go by gauging Abba Mama Kine Yesu Ya Pada Help me some alone with your maker lift your voice and cry in whatever way you can and say my god i give you thanks my god i give you thanks go ahead you and your maker for the next 10 minutes for the next 10 minutes cry before him for the next 10 minutes that you have won only you alone are worthy lord we magnify your name thank you jesus protector redeemer provider defender announcer lifter sustainer we thank you we thank you that the council of darkness has not prevailed over your people we thank you for the miracles we thank you for signs for wonders for food for shelter we thank you for your faithfulness for exalting our hands like the horn of the unicorn we thank you for miracle jobs we thank you we thank you we thank you thank you for our families oh god you have been good oh god you have been good Three more minutes. Give him thanks. Three more minutes.
I want us to thank God in one minute. Thank God in one minute for ENI and Koinonia. I'd like us to thank God for the awesome things he's doing. Let's tell him we are grateful people for giving us a platform where the sick can be healed, where lives can be transformed. Go ahead and thank him. Lord, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful people. We are not ashamed to let the world see that you are the mysterious factor behind our advancement. We are not ashamed to declare to the world that you are our sustainer, defender, protector, our hope, our anchor. We have no other God we have no other place. You alone, oh God, deserve the glory. unprecedented levels of grace and the anointing if it ever embarrasses you to thank God then you will never see his glory if you are ever ashamed and so conscious of your reputation you are so conscious of your emoji man of God I'm a great this and that all those things are nonsense when you come before his presence you throw them aside say faithful God For the things you have done And the battles you have won Only you are worthy of our praise We magnify your name For the things you have done And the battles you have won Only you For the things you have done And the battles you have won Only you are worthy of Hallelujah Psalms 107 I already sense the power of God We'll just read this and go straight into the ministrations Psalms 107 we're going to read verse 6 and then we'll read 28 to 30. I want to show you another mystery. Two mysteries. One is gratitude. The second, listen, is a mystery. I've seen this thing many times in the Bible. I want you to read it. One, two, read. Stop. Just the A part. One more time. It says, then they cried unto the Lord. There is a mystery when a man cries to the Lord. I used to think it meant just lifting your voice and be loud. Until God opened my eyes. Every time you see them say in their distress, they cried unto God. In their distress. Crying unto God is more than talking. Crying unto God first starts with a revelation. That Lord, if you don't help me in this issue, I am finished. It's a revelation. For as long as you have options, you will never see God arise in your life. Until you exhaust all your options. And you come to a point where you say, Lord, they gave me the drugs in the hospital. But I acknowledge that is crying unto God. That you say, Lord, you are my priority. 
if you don't give me a husband i cannot get one if you don't give me a job there is no job for me crying to the lord is more than just saying oh god help me blind Bartimaeus cried and this was his cry thou son of david or not thou miracle worker i know you i know your power will you pass me by and leave me in my distress like this i'm blind but i've heard about you that you are the god who can wipe the tears of people i've heard about you that you are the one who makes the barren to sing i've heard about you that you are the one who raised Job back i've heard about you it says they cried unto the lord whenever you are in trouble stop discussing the key is to cry unto god we have prayer requests here many of us are standing trusting god to touch us the key tonight is to cry unto god and the bible says he delivered them out of their distresses verse 28 28 very quickly one more time let's read one to read again then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and what did he do he bringeth them out of their distresses next verse he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof the waves that are killing you that looks like you will not survive he says god has the ability there is something he can tell that trouble it must hear his voice next verse he says then as a result they are glad because they be quiet so he bringeth them where unto their desired heaven listen god knows your intentions god knows your desire he has the ability to bring you to where your desired heaven but the key after gratitude you are authorized to cry to cry to the lord is not an embarrassment when you cry you are saying oh god let your goodness and your mercy speak at this point is not because of what i have done at this point is if it is with my intellect if it's with my money if it's with my connection i have failed i cry to you in my distress in the next one minute before i minister we are going to cry to god listen I told you crying to God is a revelation a revelation that acknowledges him as your only source tonight you are going to say Lord you are the only one you are the only one who can heal me I know this and tonight I cry to you the Bible says he can calm the storm he can calm the storm oh yes he can lift your voice and cry to your maker Thou son of David, let your goodness and your mercy speak over me tonight. Pray, Lord, there is nothing new about my situation. You have done it before. The Bible is full of records of your faithfulness. How you parted the Red Sea before people. How overnight you turned the captivity of men and women. Pray, Lord, I don't know how you will do it. But I know you can do it. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. He said, Call upon me in the day of trouble. Cry to the Lord. My rent has expired. I'm not working. I have no idea. But I cry to you. I have multiple carryovers. I don't know what will happen to me. But I cry to you, thou, O oh God, the lifter up of my head, the one who is able to change my story. I've not come to an idol. It is within your power to help me. O oh, thou Ebenezer, arise for me. You are my Ebenezer, the helper of man. God can help you. Listen to me. God can help you. God can help you. They cried unto the Lord in their distress.
Cry unto the Lord and watch what he will do in your life. Don't give him options. Don't give him options. Lord, you are my only source. I cry to you. Pray. My only hope of entering into my desired heaven. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of our God. Lord, step in to the impossible. Do the impossible. Lift your voice and sing inside and outside. Lord, step in to the impossible. Do the impossible. Come on, let your faith rise tonight. Lord, step in to the impossible. Lord, step in, Lord, step in to the impossible. To the one more time, Lord, step in, Lord, step in. Step in. Hallelujah. The Lord is healing a lady right now. Please check yourself and you just come out to testify before we continue. I'm seeing a lady. You came here with severe pain on your neck. Check it now. Check it now. The Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. I'm seeing an elderly man in this place. Um, you've been having pains towards the lower abdominal region. The Lord has just touched that man right now. He's an elderly man. I don't know where that person is. Please testify. Check yourself. And immediately you find out you are healed. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. God is touching people right now. I don't know who I'm seeing an ear. God is touching someone's ear. It's like, I don't know if it's an ear issue. But God is touching it right now. God is touching it right now. God is touching it right now. Please check yourself. And make your way right now. Right now, let's just have two or three of those people. God is touching it right now. Right now. Doing a miracle for somebody. Um, I'm seeing somebody that has... I don't know if it's... Um, I don't know what to call it, but... It's like a serious stomach issue. It comes and hooks you. Literally, you are gasping for breath. When that happens to you. It's like it literally holds you. Check yourself now. You will find out that the Lord has touched you. Make your way to the front very quickly. You can make your way right here. Miracles are happening. Come on, give Jesus praise. Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. God is touching people right now. Can you give Jesus praise? God is touching people. God is touching people right now. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. You see like a black object. It comes and goes. It's like a, it's, it looks like a needle. Like a black object. You'll be looking at people and then you will see it. This has happened for a while. But God has touched you right now. Who is that person? Make your way to the front. Right now. I'm seeing someone's left leg outside. In the overflow. There is someone with a left leg issue. Left leg. It's like you came towards the, 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 um, this area where I'm holding i'm seeing the power of god touch that area check it right now check it right now and confirm your healing and make your way to the front check it right now confirm your healing make your way to the front hallelujah have they checked themselves sir? you've checked yourself 
Okay, so quickly, we'll just take two or three. You can turn, please. Come up, come up. Let them come up. When you come, you can stand. Please come up, ma'am. Come up, sir. Go ahead. Just tell us quickly, straight to the point. Praise the Lord. Uh, I have an ear issue and it normally scratch me sometimes. Okay. And I'm feeling better by completely give right Jesus now. praise hallelujah give Jesus praise it never returns to you in the name of Jesus yes sir please let's celebrate Jesus celebrate what he's doing for some, yes for some years I have been experienced pain here pain at yes. the lower abdominal yes, region abdominal yes. yes you know I gave now, a word of knowledge yes. that there was somebody lower it's abdominal. Better. and how, how about better. now exactly it's better. in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we declare that it is perfected Wow, the power of God is coming on you. It's perfected right now. Never to return to you. In the name of Jesus. Please check it, sir. Check it. Check it right now. Check it. Okay. It's check getting it. better. Yes. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling you will better. be perfected in the name of Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. For the past two weeks now, I've been having ear pain. Ear it's pain. A, it's an attack. Okay. I have cold. I have kata. So... This thing blocked my ear. I don't used to hear very well. So now I'm I'm okay. Completely. Yes. Madam, what? The Lord is bringing increase for you. I'm seeing attack. I'm seeing a serious attack. Your money has gone down. Yes. Because this this I'm seeing this has to do with. I don't know if you sell hair or you are doing I, something. I have salon in center. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it's like an attack. This thing yes, has gone down. People are not even coming the way it used to be yes, before again. Yes, is that true? Yes. The Lord is saying, I should tell you in this miracle service, a restoration comes for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, a restoration comes for you right now. In the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. God is visiting situations right now. Visiting situations right now. Go ahead, please, quickly. I want I've been having serious pain on my neck at times. Neck pain? Yes. Okay, the lady I said with neck pain, how long? It's like, it's for months, it comes and goes. At times, it's like my entire head, my ear, it affects my ear, but when you were speaking, I, I just turned and I felt it was gone. You felt it was gone? Hallelujah. Now, there is a lady, while they were giving a testimony, there's a lady here, you felt like a cold sensation. Something just came upon you right now. It's a miracle that God has given you. Who is that person? Come out. You are in this row. Where are you? Come. You felt like a cold sensation. Something just came over you. Come. Come. This night, God is bringing restoration. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing bring restoration for her right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Tremendous restoration. I'm seeing a crown being put upon your head. Are you together? Are you together? I'm seeing a crown. Oh, you felt the same thing. I'm praying for you. Madam, the Lord is averting CS. The Lord is averting CS because, you see, the anointing is on you. The Lord is averting CS. I'm seeing a spirit standing by the theater. And I'm seeing that this is even supposed to destroy this baby. That they say this baby comes out and is affected. But the anointing of the spirit is upon you right now as I'm speaking. And I release the power of God right now. Let that demonic substance out of her. Now. Out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Is your family here? Is the time for the visitation. Where is our family? Please come. There is a whole deliverance for a family that God is doing here right now. I see that family. Please, where is our daddy and our mommy? Please appreciate them as they come. Enough of the nonsense of darkness. Please celebrate them as they come. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Lord, we see miracles everywhere. Right now. Sir, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a cause. This is what I'm seeing. As I look at you, the Lord is showing me this is a cause. Number one, it has tied down your finances completely down. This thing is so embarrassing, it has tied down everything. 
I don't know who is it in your family that has dreams. I see dreams of someone chasing somebody. I don't know which of your children or who now. But I'm seeing one of those people have dreams. That's their daughter. You see the power of God touching her. She's their daughter. She's the person with this case I'm mentioning. I'm seeing dreams. And it's like people pursuing the person. This thing started right from your family. And this is already following this lady. Because I'm seeing now that the devil wants to put fibroid in her stomach. It's starting now as pain. I, I remove that fibroid right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cause that seed of fibroid by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing this woman crying before God in prayer. This is what I'm seeing. This woman has been a defense. I'm seeing her crying before God and saying, Lord, will you not wipe our tears in this family? But tonight, we see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. But every time they want to indicate helping you, something just comes and nobody is willing to help you. Because I'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing a body but I'm not seeing a face. This thing has covered your glory. Whoever is supposed to help you misunderstands you. And for some reason, they, uh, they don't help again. Hallelujah. Who is Adamu? I'm hearing a name, Adamu. Adamu, I'm hearing something that has to do with Adamu. Adamu, please help, help those on Adamu, I'm hearing Adamu. Who is that? Adamu. Adamu. Huh? Where is your father? The person I'm talking about, his father's name is the one that is Adamu. Huh? What's your father's son name? Adamu. Adamu. Yes. God is giving Adamu a miracle. Yes. Your father, right? Where is he? Adam, Nazareth State. In Nazareth State. Yes, sir. Because this enchantment that is done against your family enough is enough it's part of your prayer request right yes, number five six uh, number two and three yes, number two and three prayer requests yes, look at it there yes, that's sir. it number two and number three that's what you wrote Long read it read it miracle in your family yes, that's what i'm reading what you are writing and god is giving a miracle yes, a big miracle to adamu miracles everywhere I see miracles everywhere Right now Right now Right now Right now I see miracles everywhere Love is a miracle Miracles everywhere We see miracles Miracles everywhere Right now Right now The Spirit of God is ministering to me I'm seeing the anointing of the Spirit I'm looking at a map and I'm seeing the spirit of God going to Yola. Yola. A miracle is happening in Yola. And it's going to this lady's family. This lady, right? I'm seeing a miracle. But there are two other people. From Yola. From Yola. I see the power of God moving. Two people. From Yola. It will come like a tornado upon you. It's a miracle that God is doing right there. There is a lady's elder sister who has been barren. I'm seeing the number three. Three years. Barren. Barren. Help them. That lady is from Yolan. She's an usher. She's walking. But the spirit of God. I'm seeing is a wicked demon. This is what I'm seeing. That has been oppressing her family. I don't know if she's from Yola or not. But I'm seeing that God is doing a serious miracle. Sir. I'm going to pray for you mommy I will minister to you madam the Lord is saying I should tell you that the crying is over the crying is over right now as I speak the power of God is coming on you the Lord is saying I should tell you the crying is over right now the angel of the Lord is pouring something that looks like oil upon your head pouring it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Pouring what looks like vials of oil. Now I curse this spirit. I address you by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Let this family go now. 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 This cause that has tied down the family, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. He said, for I will contend with them that contend with you. Right now, the power of God is touching people. I see deliverance, 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 fire. Lift your hands, everybody. Let's just interrupt this. Deliverance, fire, right now. It will start touching people at the count of three. Father, the angels of God, there are many angels in this place bringing deliverance for families. At the count of three, let that fire come right now. One, two, three, receive it. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Makaparatata. Sheketetete. Bring them out. Lekete pratata. Deliverance for families. Outside. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord go outside. Outside. The power of God is moving. It's like fire coming on families. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. We see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Right now. We see miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. We see miracles. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Father, where are those families you showed me in the place of prayer? That from the village. Now, I'm not one who just talks so much about village. But this one is from the village. I see an attack at the count of three. One, two, three. From the village. Those arrows back to sender. Shakatata. Leketata. Reketatata. From the village, I see enchantments. From the village, I see altars. I see covens. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. They are calling your names. From the village, from the village, enchantments, witchcraft, death, outside, outside, fire is falling. What fire is falling? Fire is falling from the village, speakings of death, enchantments of death. Yahweh 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 The name above all names Yahweh We call you Yahweh I'm ready to pray for you now i didn't just leave you i need to pray for you my god there is massive deliverance going on in this place my dear lift your hands where you are an angel of the lord is touching you right now right now mama an angel of the lord is touching you he's doing something in your husband's life your husband's life there is a miracle that is happening Madam, your time for a miracle has come. Come, this woman, this woman wearing pink. No, 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 I mean, that one, the one turning back. Yes, you, madam, come. 
your time for a serious visitation has come let's stretch our hands towards daddy bring her be delivered now i curse that spirit go stretch our hands towards daddy and mommy let's pray for them father this plague must stop i saw a curse it was looking like a hollow over your head it follows you everywhere you go and brings bad luck to your life father in the name of jesus is over by the power of the holy spirit i announce a new season i announce a new season mommy the spell is broken 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 in the name of jesus christ sir i hold your hands in the name of jesus and i announce to you that it's a new season you will go back and experience dramatic turnaround in the name of jesus christ don't think it will come from all the channels you are planning unusual sources of breakthrough in the name of jesus christ god bless you madam i want to pray for Do you have a daughter? Is she here? One is here? I'm seeing one of your child here. Where is the person? A girl? A lady? A girl, yes. A lady, where is she? Please call her name, let her come. Daughter, where are you? Who is the person? She's wearing something like traditional dressing. Who is that? Come. This has been your desire that God will visit your family, right? It's been your desire, it's been your prayer yes, that God will visit your family. Yes, and tonight, God has chosen to step in. See, it's an awesome thing when the light of God turns to you. Then you know that your situation has come to an end. I mustn't call you. It's not just by word of knowledge. It's not just by word of knowledge. lady is going to vomit something i'm seeing something that looks like a snake moving in her stomach this is like i don't know if it's poison this is something that has been put to this lady i curse that devil i curse you back to hell back to hell from where you came from hallelujah mommy please stand up let me pray for you man you can stand up please I want to pray for you. God is going to bring dramatic breakthrough to your life. Please, I want you to note it. Dramatic breakthrough. It will so surprise you. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, captivity comes to an end. I release supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And for you, supernatural breakthrough. Mama, I pray. The Lord told me that... The tears have come to an end. It's wiping your tears. Father, thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Remember not the former things the Lord says I should tell you. In this season, he's doing new things. He will change the heart of your husband in a way that you never imagined. He will do this for his glory. The spell of bad luck over your life is broken. Bad luck. There's something about your life that makes people hate you. It's a spirit. And there are people here. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm praying for you. Whatever makes people hate you for no reason, I want you to know that it's not normal. You will see what will happen right now. There are people here. I know that people have those kinds of things. But there are people with those things. It's like an aura on you. As I was ministering to her, the Lord said, minister to the house. Father, where are they? Right now, in the name of Jesus, let the anointing locate them. Inside and outside. That spell of bad luck. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Justina, the Lord is bringing miracles to your family. Miracles to your family. I'm seeing a lady from, is it Oka? Oka, that should be East. I'm, I'm, Oka, is there anyone from like that? I'm seeing a lady. Our minister generally will pray for the sick now, but I just want to flow. Oka, 
Oka. Is there someone like that? Please, if you are like that, you can make your way to the front. The Lord wants me to pray for that family. My dear, you with a white hair tie, that lady, you turning back, lift your hands where you are. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but God is destroying an embargo over your life and family. Lord Jesus, I destroy it right now. In the name of Jesus, where you are standing, I destroy it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are from there? You are from Oka? Where is that? Anambra State. Anambra State? Yes. I'm going to pray for you. You're also from there? Huh? Make your way to the front. You are from there too. Three of you. Look at me. You cannot be a victim, you and your sisters, of the wickedness of people in the village. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hold my hands. Father, it must end. This must end. It must end by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is, I'm seeing enchantment. This is, this is witchcraft to produce consistent failure in life. You and your sisters, I pray for you. Father, you are going to visit them in this season. You are going to visit them in this season. In the name of Jesus. I want to minister to you. You are from there too. Come stand. The Lord gave me that word and said to minister to the people. As I lay my hands and minister to you, I want you to know that everything that does not represent God, uh, and everyone pursuing you in your dream and disturbing you, it must end in the name of Jesus Christ. For you, there is, there is, I'm seeing something that looks like a crown in your head. We must remove it because it's not God that put that crown. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil is a liar. Take it off of her. The Lord Jesus Christ. Where is your mother, my dear? Huh? Abia State. Abia State. We are going to pray for you. Tell your mother that a deliverance is coming for her. Then a breakthrough. Deliverance first, then breakthrough. For the deliverance, she will see it in a dream. It's like something will be chasing her to catch her, and she will see somebody who will snatch her out. It's a dream connoting deliverance. Father, visit this family. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. A student here huh? yes. we must pray for you so that the spirit that destroys men when they are about to finish huh? in your family we must stop it in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself oh God I curse this spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ lift your hands everyone Before I begin to minister to the sick, God is bringing deliverance to families right now. We are going to shout Jesus at the count of three. This is not just to you, but God is stepping into families. Some of you never knew that what is happening physically in your family is as a result of all kinds of things. Devils, lift your hands everybody. At the count of three, you shout Jesus at the top of your voice. And the power of God will move mightily in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you step into families and end every oppression and every captivity right now i pray by the power of the holy spirit every family shakatatata, under any demonic siege my goodness the power of god is already touching people right now at the count of three let that shout be like a code in the spirit one two three be delivered now 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 altars be broken altars be broken over families over families inside and outside and those following online i break it right now every family under any spell every family that's right kabatakata bring them out shakatatata Every family under any spell. Oh, you must leave them. You must leave them. I speak to those spirits. Hear my voice. In the name of Jesus. 
there is no hiding place for you you must go you must go you must go it's time for their deliverance you must go hallelujah my goodness god is doing miracles right now god is so help that lady please help them sisters lift your hands i want to pray for just the sisters something remarkable will happen right now remarkable there is a spirit that puts women in bondage because when one woman is in bondage it can affect a thousand men there are ladies oh my goodness the fire of god will move not small sisters lift your hands lord by fire as the sisters cry that spirit that seraph that follows ladies and causes them visiting them in dreams as you shout jesus my goodness i pray that those fallen spirits that will not let you go that did not keep their original estate they will be judged right now father locate every one of these sisters right now one two shout jesus right now right now right now right now right now those spirits go 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 lift your hands there are people here strange dreams strange dreams in the night you sleep in the night and you have all kinds of strange dreams from men or women or animals coming to sleep with you or people tying your legs and you see what is happening in the day whether you believe it or not is not the issue i want to settle those things right now lift your hands lord where are these people from the dream realm from the realm of the spirit as you shout the name jesus anyone under this condition some of you that's what is responsible for masturbation some of you that's what is responsible for pornography some of you that's what is responsible for delay lift your hands father those spirits that use the realm of dreams and visions and manipulate destinies manipulate the stars of your people at the count of three we set them on fire fire comes upon you now many guys will be affected one two three oh i bring you deliverance in the name of jesus i cause those spirits causing delay you must leave now 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 Go, 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 go. That spell of delay must leave. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. I'd like you to pray and cause delay from your life. In the next one minute, open your mouth and say enough is enough. I must move forward. Pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. It's called a miracle service. It's called a miracle service. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of delay. yes 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 prophesy i'm moving forward this is the ninth month by the blood of jesus i'm moving forward i'm moving forward under this anointing hallelujah 
Hallelujah. I like you to shout after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every obstacle standing between me and the next level by the blood of Jesus I bring those gates down open your mouth and begin to pray gates of limitations standing before me and my desired heaven gates of limitation standing before me in the name of Jesus gates of limitation standing before me and my desired heaven outside make sure you are praying pray you will return with a testimony you are praying under a corporate anointing hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus everything that belongs to me and is not yet in my life in this season by the power of faith I command them to manifest open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and pray come on koinonia everything every lifting every glory that belongs to me and has refused to manifest by the power of faith even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were hallelujah hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus every legal access every claim the devil has over my life over my family by the blood of Jesus I declare that I'm free by the blood of Jesus I command my liberty I declare that the price for my freedom has been paid therefore Satan stay off my life open your mouth and begin to pray stay off my life the price has been paid by the death of Jesus every cause every yoke every spell every enchantment by the blood of Jesus pray Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me carefully. I'm doing this by the Spirit. Listen, many breakthroughs are happening to people just from this simple prayer. I wish that God could open your eyes to see the things that are happening to people. You are, this is not just your normal prayer. You are under a heavy anointing. Listen, human beings have prophetic atmospheres. The ark of God came into the house of Obed Edom and brought him good. Jonah entered a boat and made people to be destroyed. Listen, some of you are good people, but you are carrying a spiritual atmosphere that brings bad luck to you and everybody connected to you that's what prophets sometimes will see and because they don't have discernment they call people witches and wizards they are not witches and wizards they are sincere people but they carry a spiritual climate that everywhere they go it makes certain things to happen do you understand now some of you are sincere people but you are carrying atmospheres that makes everything around your life to fail we are going to pray say after me in the name of jesus 
by the blood of Jesus this is strong prayer this simple prayer you are saying you will see the result instantly I like you to pray and say every atmosphere that I carry that does not come from God and is responsible for bad luck and misfortune in my life tonight I declare let that atmosphere change lift your voice and pray seriously lift your voice and pray seriously every negative atmosphere kaparatata pray miracles are happening pray every negative atmosphere pray that brings bad luck I may be a sincere person but it brings repeated misfortunes I challenge it whether ancestral whether territorial I challenge it I change my spiritual climate by the blood of Jesus hallelujah two more prayer points and we'll pray for the sick hallelujah we are going to pray a prayer of restoration do you believe in restoration nothing is ever truly lost it only leaves your presence I like us to pray yeah that's the song everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen one more time forget about your situation just prophesy just prophesy you may not know how it will happen just prophesy one more time prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me shout it say in the name of Jesus all the years all the fortunes every opportunity every access that has been lost in my life by the mercy of God I command them to come back to me go ahead and pray this is a serious prayer point all the years all the fortunes all the opportunities all the access that have passed your life pray like Samson pray like Hezekiah pray let there be a restoration and I will restore to you the years that the canker worm the palmer worm, the caterpillar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray the last prayer point. Listen. There are spirit entities that challenge and haunt the destiny of people. In the realm of the spirit when Jesus was born certain men saw his star from the east and they started following that star and the moment they announced to Herod a king is born Herod said ah a king he said please find where he is and tell me so that I will come and worship him but his intention was to kill him you are going to pray over your destiny Please take this prayer point seriously. 
Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I declare that my destiny is secured by the blood. Every act of witchcraft that has tied down my destiny right now by the blood of Jesus. Release it now. Pray, pray. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. My prophetic potential. Release it. Release it. Hallelujah. Prophesy after me, say in the name of Jesus. This is my year of the rain. It's a new dimension for me. I'm breaking every limitation. Say it again. I'm breaking every limitation. And I declare that in this remaining part of the year, an anointing comes upon my life that causes me to triumph that causes me to excel go ahead and pray it lord is my year of the rain an anointing comes upon my life a speedy walk by the holy ghost a speedy walk of restoration a speedy walk hallelujah we're going to do two things at the same time right now listen if there is any trace of sickness and infirmity in your body it's time for it to die are we together now are we together now please just address these people we're going to have all those people come and line up while that is happening please i beg you if you do not write anything in your prayer request please if you need papers maybe the ushers can pass it we are going to be praying on everybody's request those on facebook some of your loved ones you are permitted to switch off your switch on your phone and tell them please send in your prayer request because god is about to do something right now while you are doing that be praying in tongues everybody be praying in tongues while sick people all those who brought sick people make your way to the front very quickly please very quickly all those trusting god for healings and miracles please just line up Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto you. The devil is a liar. He must Everything let you go tonight. That was stolen shall be restored unto you. Hallelujah. We don't just lay hands on people. I know that it takes a lot of time. But it's the way God is directing us. It's not just ordinary hand laying. It's a prophetic point of contact. Some of you are coming out for sickness. But the truth about it is that there is an oppression of darkness. Is that the mama with cancer? Okay. No, no problem. No problem. She can come. If she cannot stand, just give her a seat. Let her sit down, please. Those who are weak and cannot stand, please, you can give them a seat so that they don't collapse. The, the woman with cancer, if she, if she cannot come, just I'll minister to her. Everything that was lost. Make sure you are writing your prayer request, please. Everything that was lost. Hallelujah. All of you that are coming out, I want you to know that we are patient enough to minister to us. There are all kinds of ministries. This ministry is like a spiritual factory. It's like a spiritual workshop. It's where we dirty our hands on the job. And as I minister to us, please, I want our hearts to be open. Don't just stand watching the power of God touch people. The moment I lay hands on you and minister to you, I want you to receive. You can go back to your seat. Some of you will be under the anointing. It doesn't matter. As I pray for you, you don't have to scrounge. I will lay hands on everybody. 
it's going to be a quick walk it will take time please when you write your request pass it to the ushers in case there are things listen listen let me teach you how to maximize this prayer point don't just write things carelessly while you are writing be praying in tongues because the spirit of god will bring into your mind bring you into remembrance it may even be a matter that is not your own you heard the story of the gentleman dropped a prayer point and nine months later they are coming with twins there is nothing god cannot do father in the name of jesus i pray over your people there are powers tying down their destinies but you have put this miracle service as a prophetic platform let there be miracles go ahead all of us we can join praying in tongues while i pray for these people occasionally worship team you will help us lord we give you praise in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ look at this i don't know they can't see it on screen it's not clear this is a leg that is bent father do a miracle they didn't fix it well in the name of jesus right now let the power of god do a miracle on this leg in the name of jesus Almighty God, you know me, my Lord. You know me, my Lord. Out! Now you be God. Almighty God, you know me, my Lord. 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 Now you be God, oh. point number two lord i take full delivery of everything you package uniquely for me tonight lift your voice i will not miss out on anything yeah. Yeah. hallelujah who brought this woman please huh? what's the issue what's wrong she... hallelujah we'll soon be rounding up let's just hear no 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 keep us standing what's wrong I'm paralytic. Nice. paralyzed yes. mama can she talk yes mama for how long I Paralyzed. Did. Yes, I went to the house and met She can't walk on her own. She can't walk very well. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ, I curse this spirit. It's okay. In the name of Jesus. Mama, look at me. In Jesus' name, lift your hand. Lift it. Go. Don't look at Just lift it. Put it down. Lift it again. Paralyzed hand. Look at this. Look at this. Mama, clear the way for her. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Come. Don't hold her. Come. 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 Turn around. Turn around. Walk. Come. Come. Come on. Give Jesus we praise. Miracles Come. everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Paralyze. Miracles everywhere.
name of Jesus. I break the power of paralysis. It never returns to you again. In the name of Jesus, you are the son that brought her. You are, she's not your mom, yes. but you brought her. Yes. I pray for you. May you never lack helpers in your life. Because you are a young man, you are not related to her. Yet you carried mama out of compassion. This miracle is because of you. I'm laying hands on you and I prophesy to you. All the days of your life may help us be around you like this. In the name of Jesus Christ. For as long as your eyes can see the sun, you will find a helper. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Celebrate mama. God bless you. ministry come and stand here it's time for you to take fresh fire please if you come out and you are not a minister i will send you back i assure you don't embarrass yourself if you're a minister and you know not just that you sense the call of god please don't embarrass yourself we are going to pray for everybody but if you're a minister come go ahead don't be afraid we're in a season of god's glory please listen when a season of God's remarkable grace, it takes signs and wonders, not just grammar and story. The Bible is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God for the manifestation. Please, I'd like you to believe. I'm going to do this very fast. The Lord has instructed me. Immediately after we do that, all visitors, visitors alone, I will not lay hands on you, but I'll pray for you. And then we'll pray for the request, prophesy. We're out. We'll do all this within the next 10 minutes so that we're done. Father, I pray. It's not by might, it's not by power. Lord, as I lay hands upon your servants, let something new, something divine. My God, I pray. Activate the gifts of the spirit in them. Activate the operations of signs and wonders. Shkabalata. Let utterance be given unto them. Let their lives, oh God, produce results. Results, oh God. Results. Signs. Wonders. Miracles. By your hand. Take the fire. Take the fire, take the fire, take the fire, 
take the fire 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 fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire new levels fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire new dimensions fresh grace my goodness fire is falling fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh grace fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh grace fresh anointing new anointing new dimension gifts of the spirit vision dreams prophecies multiplied graces I prophesy to all of you let it be a new season in the name of Jesus new season new season new season I empower you for a new dimension in the spirit I empower you fresh grace fresh grace please stretch your hands towards the prayer request unto thee that answers prayers shall all flesh come please stretch your hands it's a prophetic instruction God gave us we have seen amazing testimonies if there are still people left please let them come let them drop it very quickly in one minute I'd like you to begin to pray Lord it's time to turn my story around my goodness as we pray miracles will begin to happen to people right in the crowd right in the crowd as I'm touching the request something is happening to you something is happening I'm seeing angels lightning all over all over all over father in the name of Jesus we pray go ahead and pray everyone of miracles happening in the realm of the spirit father turn these requests into testimonies the way I walk on them oh God these problems remain under our feet forever in the name of Jesus Christ 
under our feet forever in the name of Jesus Christ all our visitors please come out quickly if you're a visitor here you're a visitor this is your first time Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to us last year. He said we should prophesy and pray over the visitors. Some of you have traveled kilometers. You have traveled from different states of this nation, risking yourself through the night. Please make sure you come. Clear the way for them. You are a visitor. This is your first time you are coming here. Make your way to the front. Let's celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying, people? The number of visitors that troop in every week into Zaria for Koinonia is getting so much. We have to find something to start doing around your regions so that we save some of you transporting yourself. Maybe we'll open a branch of Koinonia in all those places. Maybe we'll come to your village. <laughs> Hallelujah. But seriously, we're trusting God for instructions for the next level. And I'm sure that very soon he's going to speak. But I perceive that very soon there's going to be a lot of expansion because of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Are you glad about that? Let's celebrate Jesus. God has brought you here. Your life will never be the same. Please lift your hands. Father, you have brought these people all the way. Some of them with burdens. Some of them coming to catch fire. I stretch my hands towards you. Kaborato shatabaladaba. Nandeka lekoroto suto prashia. My goodness, I see impartations happening to people. Those of you standing, I'm seeing impartations. It's like rain, rain touching people. That's what I see. These are showers of blessings, showers of miracles. I prophesy to you from tonight. Help them, help them, help them, help them, please. I prophesy to you. Step into new levels. In the name of Jesus Christ, step into new dimensions. This is Koinonia, a place of encounter. It's not just the name of a meeting. It's the name and the dimension of the operation of the Spirit. We bless you with hunger for God. We bless you with passion for the things of the Spirit. I'm praying for you. You will go back with such fire. You will go back with such passion you will not recover from. I pray that everything that has not been working in your life, let it be activated tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I welcome all of you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We're here every Friday. Um, this is not our usual venue. Our venue is Christ Gospel Church at New Extension. But we thank you for coming. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart and on behalf of everyone in this ministry and the many who are joining us online that you will return with a strange miracle. In the name of Jesus, you will return with a strange miracle. Some of you, even before you get home, your miracles will be waiting for you. Some of you, this night, you will have dreams and encounters and the veil over your eyes will be opened. Some of you, this night, God will show you what has been happening in your life. God will show you direction. I see God giving a lot of you direction. Direction for the next level. You will hear his voice very accurately. In the vision of the night. In the vision of the night he will show you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you. For those of you who have never been here. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They will have your details outside very quickly. And then you will come and join us. Those of you who have been here and we have received you. You can just go back to your seat with a blessing. But those of you who have never been here, you've not put down your name. We need your names and details. I want you to make your way here in the name of Jesus. Everybody rise as we receive the last prophecy for the meeting. Now you be God. Almighty God. You know be my name. Now him be God, Almighty God, you know me, you know me. Two 
more times. Now you be God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow morning we are off to Pogi State. We are going to be tearing down the walls of darkness. Trust God to set that territory free. Pray for us and if you come from Pogi, stand by us and tell and let's trust God to really do something apostolic in that land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now please this for me, you always hear me say this. I consider this to be the most important part of the meeting. Because this is where everybody gets to receive the creative power of the spoken word. The creative power of prophecy. This is where the word of God comes into you like a drug. And literally, literally alters you. And so I want you to receive with your heart open. Hallelujah. Please, receive with your heart open. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I pray for you, I want you to receive by shouting a resounding amen. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. I prophesy no more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears, Kapakatata. No more tears in the name of Jesus. These hands that are lifted, I prophesy. May a supernatural anointing come upon it. Let it begin to produce extraordinary results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Extraordinary results. I pray for everyone due for promotion. And every of your loved ones due for promotion. In the name of Jesus, we cause the embargo stopping their promotion. And we prophesy promotion. There will be testimonies of promotion. The power of God is touching people. Everyone and every family called jobless. Shaba katata baladaba. Mande grete ketetete. I feel like fire on my hands as I'm about to pray this. Please help them. I feel like fire on my hands. Everyone represented here and every family called jobless. Right now in the name of Jesus, I release an anointing for supernatural jobs. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Help them please. Receive it, receive it. Testimonies of jobs. Testimonies of jobs. Testimonies of jobs. Every delay in your life that has stopped you from entering where you should enter now. The anointing that came on Elijah that he girded his loins and ran. Receive that anointing right now. I cause delay in the name of Jesus. I cause delay in the name of Jesus. Everyone who has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise and your family to rise, I declare that to their shame my God will lift you before them my God will lift you before them my God will lift you before them everyone who says can anything good come out of your life I prophesy to you in this season God will use your life to answer them God will use your life to answer them I pray for
for you in the name that is above all names whoever needs to come into your life in this season no let's start it this way whoever needs to go out of your life this season in the name of jesus if their presence has been causing you pain and setback i break you free from them now wrong associations be free from them now wrong relationships we break it now wrong soul ties we break it now wrong connections we break it now wrong fraternities we break it now we break it now we break it now i command them out of your life out of your family listen some of our parents the trouble in their life is because they have wrong friends they will never leave they keep influencing them to make useless decisions i pray for every family any stranger manipulating the destiny of any family through the counsel of Ahitophel, today we send them packing from their homes packing from your homes in the name of jesus until samuel appeared the destiny of saul remained covered until jesus appeared 12 years of hemorrhage continue whoever must appear in your life whoever must appear magato topata you hear me talk of destiny help us all the time your next level comes from god but through the hands of a destiny helper from the realm of the spirit destiny help us i call you from the north from the north from the south from the east from the west wherever you are locate god's people come into their lives in the name of jesus every academic challenge you have tried and done everything you know to do but you need a miracle in the name of jesus i release my faith upon with you receive academic miracles now 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 we activate angels to faculties angels to departments angels to faculties faculty of art science environmental design medicine engineering administration education we release them now miracles in the name of jesus that favor anointing that makes men run to look for people to bless them i pray for you when the favor of god came upon my fever shed saul looked for him and blessed him receive favor right now unusual favor uncommon favor uncommon favor in the name of jesus before i pray the last prayer point listen if you're here and you've not given your heart to jesus christ please i can't pray this last prayer point without making this sure because i want to pray something dangerous if you're here you've never given your heart to the lord please listen inside and outside or you once gave your heart to jesus christ but for some reason you see they're already coming out follow them you found out that you need to make your ways right please our time is limited in one minute inside and outside you're welcome make your way to the front god bless you bless you they are coming going on here celebrate them don't sit back don't sit back this is a family this is not all of you i believe there are still some people outside clear the way for them please clear the way god bless you sirs bless you sirs celebrate them jesus is calling you god bless you ma calling you to give you a new beginning 
please if they are coming clear the way for them so that they don't become discouraged motivate them clap for them thank you jesus come run to jesus christ he will give you a new beginning if the holy spirit is telling you to come out come out don't sit back there don't sit back there many of you are hearing the nudging of the spirit he's saying why are you sitting down don't argue with him make your way hallelujah thank you so much for coming out brothers and sisters i want to lead you in a prayer of salvation it's not a poem it's not a special number it's a it's a genuine prayer of dedication god bless you hallelujah lift your right hand high to heaven and say this very passionately please you are not reciting a poem this is not an article you are praying to god this is a prayer that is going to save your soul and redeem you and empower you to be great say lord jesus i believe in you and i love you with all my heart i ask you to forgive me my sins i receive jesus christ into my heart be my lord be my savior from today my past is gone it's a new beginning i receive eternal life into my spirit the old is gone and the new has come in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now i stretch my hands father these ones have come to make a decision for you i pray that this decision will be permanent they will never backslide no going to the world no going to the flesh i release grace upon you to live the victorious christian life in the name of jesus christ every wrong association every company of wicked and senseless people you will not have any appetite and desire to be close to them again you will love them but you will not associate with them again i receive grace for you to edit your friends wicked and unreasonable people are far from you forever in the name of jesus christ i bless you congratulations in the name of jesus it's a new beginning please follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will have your details will follow you up in the name of jesus please lift your hands for the last prayer point i want to pray for the gift of the spirit to fall upon your life this is why i said we have to pray for them please lift your hands just a quick walk in one minute some of you have passionately desired certain things some of you have had dreams but you cannot understand god is speaking to you there are many of you that have longed to hear the voice of god you are praying and somehow you hear it but there is no clarity and direction there are some of us that are trusting god for newer levels of the anointing the gifts of the spirit please lift your hands in one minute i'm going to pray there will be a great impartation upon you all the gifts of the spirit the nine recorded in the bible and every other one that is available in god father i'm praying right now as your people shout i receive let there be mighty impartations there are people here who will carry strange fires strange grace at the count of three shout i receive one two three receive it right now right now right now right now gifts of healing impartations visions 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 prophetic encounters Kaparatata. receive it right now in the name of jesus word of knowledge word of wisdom gift of leadership administration dreams visions entrepreneurship every gift available receive it now now please help that lady so she doesn't enjoy herself i pray for you what you could not do by the gift of the spirit go and begin to do it where you could not enter by this new anointing go and enter nothing dies in your hands in the name of jesus christ celebrate jesus hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their 
spirit, we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 